Okay, so this is the basic configuration of uh, the connections to the battery in the Subaru. Uh, from the plus terminal, you have a big wire going to the plus side of the starter, and you have another wire going to the uh, under the fuse box to provide the main power to the main fuse box. From the negative terminal, you have a ground that goes that is attached to the fender that provides ground to the chassis. And you have another ground that goes just next to the starter to provide ground for the engine block. Um, so now you have two options to uh, insert the kill switch in this. The first option we're going to talk about is using a regular four pole kill switch that has two poles for the battery and two poles to kill the engine. So when you put the four pole kill switch in the loop, what happens is that you disconnect your uh, main positive for the battery you run a cable from the battery all the way inside the car to the kill switch you come back from the kill switch and you connect to your uh, where your uh, cables were connected to the battery before so basically you get rid of your previous connector here and you just run a big wire in series and back to uh, your main wiring harness to power your starter and your main fuse box so when you kill the kill switch, that basically disconnects those wires from the battery. The main issue is that uh, from the battery to the kill switch, you have a big live wire going uh, through the car and through your firewall. And the issue, like I had at Diffy, is when the grommet fails, and if that wire shortens to the chassis, it shortens before the kill switch. And so you can try to kill the switch as much as you want, that connects directly the battery to the chassis and uh, the battery will melt and the wires are going to melt. Is it okay? The whole wiring is melting over there. Is it going to... Is it going to... He's okay, but... Oh no, don't fire, don't fire here. That's a two-way bit. Two-way bit. Two-way bit. Shit. So one thing I did on, on the car for a while is add a second kill switch here. So this thing can just stay by the battery. So that in case I had a problem on that wire, I could just kill it directly at the battery. And there was just a, second, a secondary kill switch in series that was just sitting on top of the battery. Here we made effort to route the car away from the fuel lines. The fuel lines are the braided lines you see here. And go towards the back and here through a different grommet that is just used by the kill switch. So this setup only disconnects the battery but doesn't kill the engine. You still have to connect those two other poles to kill uh, the car. So this is a wiring harness that goes to the ignition key. So when you turn the key you have the three position accessories, ignition and start. And if you look at the back uh, you have one wire for one wire for power and ground at the bottom, and then you have accessories, ignition, and start. So if you take that ignition wire here and you cut it, you will go from the ignition wire to the kill switch and coming back to the, uh, where the ignition wire was so that basically you put the, the switch in series with your ignition wire. And now what's going to happen when you kill the switch, basically you are going to cut the ignition wire and that's going to shut the car off. That's the easiest method to do that. I have uh, another video showing how it is wired inside the car if you make a custom dash when you remove your steering column. Um, but that's basically the principle on how to shut off the car uh, with, the, uh, with the main switch. You can also check that if I start the car and I just kill the kill switch, that kills everything and the, the car stops. So the way the things work with a Cortex GT, you don't touch anything of your main. So um, the plus positive going to the starter and going to the main fuse box remain the same. You don't touch them. You just disconnect your ground and instead you run a ground cable from the battery directly to the negative post of the, uh, of the Cortex GT. And you have to secure the Cortex GT to the chassis. So actually, if you reuse 
uh, where this uh, original ground cable was bolted to the fender, you can just bolt the uh, Cortex GT to the fender, and uh, this way you have your uh, ground circuit already ready. And all the other ground that was coming from uh, to ground the en the uh, engine at the starter. So the engine block needs to be grounded to the rest of the chassis because the motor mount and stuff isolated from the rest of the chassis. So this ground you will still have to bring it back somewhere to the chassis and actually what I did on my car is I uh, run the cable just behind the Cortex so it's sandwiched between the Cortex and the um, and the chassis and this way I use the same ground for, for everything. Um, the other thing that the Cortex needs, uh, it needs a 12 volt power supply so you can run a small wire like this from the battery to this uh, positive terminal that just to provide power here and then is it provide you with two switches one for the external kill switch if, if you don't want to use it you can just connect the two wires together uh, that you can put by your windshield or something on the outside for workers to be able to kill the car from the outside and this one is a switch that goes on the inside so here you will have to run longer wires to go inside the car but they are like tiny gauge wires um, with very little volt, voltage in amp, so much safer than running the, the big wires um, and there is no risk of uh, fire or shorting there. Um, so that only disconnects the battery uh, but you still need to kill the engine so they provide you with a post here for the, uh, for the ECU. So here you are going to run a wire to the same thing we have that uh, ignition harness so basically now what you are going to do is that um, the wire that provides the uh, feed for the whole harness which must be one of those you are going to cut it and provide basically the juice directly from here to the harness so that the power for the ignition harness now comes from the car tech instead of coming from the car. So when uh, you press uh, the button to tell uh, the car tech to disconnect the battery, it will also cut the juice to uh, the ignition and shut off the ignition. So I reuse the stock ground, which is this bolt here that the stock ground where usually the battery going to the battery goes directly here. So now I bolted the cart tech here and from the negative I go to the negative of the battery here. Right now it's shut off. If I press here we have the uh, button, the LED that comes on, uh, meaning the car is powered. So now I can do accessory, ignition, if your pump is priming, then I can press the stop button. The car is starting and here if I press the uh, kill switch that just kills the car and here otherwise my regular procedure uh, when I stop the car I can just shut ignition and shut accessories and so it's uh, I just have a tiny wire running here and the ECU wire from the Cortex is wired directly to my igni ignition switch here I have another video explaining how the whole wiring behind those buttons is you can check that online on the uh, progressing YouTube channel. So that's a uh, basic principle and the difference between the two kill switch systems. I hope uh, this is helpful. If you have the money and can afford a Cortex GT, uh, definitely go for this. Uh, Rally.build has them the cheapest right now. And if you are on a budget, uh, you can go with a regular kill switch, but be very careful where you route your wires. And I strongly recommend adding a second kill switch in series uh, by the battery.